Hello and welcome to the show, Monday, November 22nd. My name is Brian Birch, broadcasting from Hopkins, Minnesota. With me, as always, Miss Juliana from St. Paul. Hello. Hello. How's your Monday going? Well, uh, since we kind of talked about it prior to this. Uh, yeah, that, I should have asked that question. Take that question off the table. Pretty funny happening uh, for a parent. Yeah. Ah, my boys are a little bit older, and I think they got everything by us, so I just didn't know about it. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I had suspicions. I had suspicions. Oh my gosh, I can't relate because I never like got into any of that kind of stuff until I was like that old. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. Well, whatever. That's a whole other topic. You got lucky with me, let's just say. Yeah. I'm a single mom and working all the time. And then, you know, oh, well, I hope my kid's doing the right thing. With an older brother that's a couple years older. And that can lead to, uh, especially if he has friends over. <laughs> I was just that weird sister that likes to, to, like, do what they were doing. I covered. Yeah. And that was about it. But whenever I hung out with my older brother and his friends, they got me to do some pretty stupid shit. Not me. I wasn't one of those kids. I was like, peer pressure? Nah. Like, one year around the 4th of July, one of the neighborhood kids said, hey, we got these special new firecrackers. They're finger safe, so you can actually hold it in your finger. And my brother my brother let them, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll hold it. So I'm holding it, and they lit it, and it went off. And my brother actually just sat there and witnessed it. Nobody knew if it's going to blow my finger off or not. It didn't, thankfully, but uh, anyway. So, yes, uh, we've got a packed show for you today. Bitcoin, ooh, Bitcoin, down to 56065 from its high of 66000 a couple weeks ago. So hopefully that uh, bounces back a little bit. Typical fashion, we'll start with the funny. This one's not that funny, but uh, it gives me a chance to plug it. Gives me a chance to plug Twitter handle Cat Turd. Uh, if you're not following, if you're not following Cat Turd. That's with two T's. You should definitely put him on your list. Uh, but they put together the. Are you familiar with Cat Turd? Uh, only, only today or this morning, because I was watching the latest to JP series video. He he quoted J, according to the journalist uh, Cat Turd. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cat Turd's a Gen Gen Xer from Florida. I'm pretty sure he's from Florida, and he's just got a a real uh, teenage sense of humor about everything. So, anyway, I'll play this. If you get vaccinated and your family's vaccinated, you can feel good about enjoying a typical Thanksgiving, Christmas with your family and close friends. We unfortunately still have the dynamics of uh, infection in the community of about 70,000 new cases per day. So when you go to an indoor congregate setting, go to the extra be safe, be healthy. And when you're with your family at home, goodness, enjoy it with your parents, your children, your grandparents. There's no reason not to do that. This will end. This will end. <laughs> yeah, that's basically true. <laughs> yes uh did you catch governor DeSantis in florida last week he i think they were signing either a new voting bill or they were signing some kind of a new bill did you did you see this and where he decided to to have the press conference i did not oh wait in brandon <laughs> yeah you got to appreciate this guy i mean him and Ted Cruz, you know, they're actually pretty funny. Um, so I've just got a short 50-second one of... It's obvious, it's obvious to a lot of the people in the crowd that they believe you chose Brandon because of the thing that goes around on certain websites. Is this why you came to Brandon, because of the trolling of the Biden administration? So I think that Brandon, Florida is a great American city. I think the people here... I can tell you, my only negative 
negative on Brandon was they when I was growing up playing baseball, they always used to beat us every year. Uh, but now I think, uh, you know, as governor, I'm really proud to be able to do it. I want to thank Brandon Honda for hosting us here today. You gotta love the trolling governor. We used to have one in Minnesota, Jesse Ventura. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was kind he of was young, always, young and to really remember those days. Yeah, I was I was in Madison at the time, but uh he was he was something else. So anyone in Minnesota that ever says don't vote third party because it's a wasted vote, it's like no. We have proof that the third party can win. But anyway. So the Rittenhouse verdict finally came through early last week. Oh, yeah. And you've seen all the uh, reactions from the left and from the right. Um, it's been kind of disgusting, actually. But uh, And then I'm not sure if you saw last yesterday, there was a, another thing in near Kenosha. I did not. Which, last night oh there was like a christian celebration christmas party or something gathering and some guy came through in an suv and just pl i think he took out like eight people <gasps> and it turns out it's a black guy and it and of course C cnn and nobody's covering it and they're saying oh he, he didn't do it intentionally he was fleeing the crime scene and it's like we'll we'll see about that totally different coverage than the, the Rittenhouse one, but uh, yeah, I got some heat um, on Saturday because I shared some Candace Owen tweets. Yeah, I know. And then I got you know called a almost called a you know racist. Oh, I know you're not a racist because you've been nice to me, but just wanted to you know. Uh, but yeah, at least private message you and hashed it out that way instead yeah, of getting. Yeah, so I did have a good it good direct clear communication with the person and it was very positive yeah very positive so and i like my responses it was very positive but then my other friend she did not reply back to me she probably does is a she never really doesn't like me right now no and that's just gonna happen unfortunately and, and i'm fine with that because because i know that me sharing a tweet is not and what I said to her, it's just like, you know what? These situations are being skewed by the media and they don't look good in general, right? Like when they were, and she wasn't even talking about this, this newer case with this, this, this young man, right? She's talking about the, um, the, that started, you know, that launched a thousand ships. The, the thing that happened in Minneapolis with uh, Derek Chauvin and um, uh, Floyd. Right? Yeah. yeah. And she's talking about that. Oh, do you think she should have been in jail? And it's like, well, okay, well, um, it's like, I think that that situation was not good on either end and was a ploy to get you to think a certain thing. Bad all around. You know, that's what I said to that. I didn't say, do I think you should be on jail or not? I probably don't have, personally don't have enough information of whether, you know, I mean, not sitting necessarily like he, he should be in jail or not, or like what the verdict should have been, because I honestly yeah. think that that was a staged coup and a setup. I think it was just a an act, but I could. <laughs> but that's my opinion. I don't think it actually was real. So. Yeah, I I've flipped back and forth. I think the event actually happened. I think the powers that be though just acted really quick because it was such a dramatic you know, with the footage and everything. I, I don't doubt that it actually happened, but... I mean, they probably did it in front of cameras, but I think they deliberately did it in a way, and they put people that look like... I mean, I, you know, I'd be wrong, but I think they did some swaps with people and real people. It could be. I mean, I don't Floyd... Know. I think that guy, I think, I think the guy that... The Floyd, I think he's a millionaire, or he like he's a he's rich on an island somewhere and laughing. <laughs> Because they, I think, I mean, just looking at the footage, I think they got, there's a different, there's a different dude huh. different than the guy in the footage. I think he looks different. And so I don't even think, and they knew each other, the cop and the. Well, they knew each other. Let's not get too deep into this. But one of the things, 
I just don't think it adds up. And I think it was just both wrapped in and, and, and pushing and it was used and it, it's huge to, to push a narrative, the media to the narrative. So it doesn't matter if I think he should, the guy should be in jail or not. I just think that all was bull crap to get you to have a, in, to, to incite rage in you and to get you. See, I don't believe that, I don't believe that Floyd is still alive, but here's, here's a different take on that. What if it was orchestrated and what if Floyd was like, look, I've, you know, I, I'm just going to OD. We'll set this all up. You make sure to set up my family for life. My life's yeah, not going yeah. to be I think that could have been a possibility also. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck on what I think necessarily happened, but I just think it was just bullshit. And yeah. It's yeah. not real. Like in, in its entire, not like clear cut. Like, oh yeah, that guy really was racist against that guy. I don't believe that at all. So. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Um, I don't believe it, it wasn't a race issue. It was maybe a poor policing, but not a race issue. Uh, so I think we're all beginning to realize, especially through the Rittenhouse trial, that on the left and the right, we're getting two different movie screens. Like, there's two different storylines going on in everything. And we're, we're getting more and more into our own echo chamber. So I, I put together just a little uh, clip on how Fox reacted and how CNN reacted, just to kind of prove that point. Um, so I'll put. All right, I'm Chris Cuomo, and welcome to Prime Time. The jury in Kenosha, Wisconsin, spoke. The case is over. The story is not. And let's be clear: there's plenty to be upset about. It is too easy to kill in this society, and our laws make it so. And yet, there are too many tonight offering a jaundiced view of this case. So let's take a clear-eyed look at the realities of the law and the facts in this case, and you will see why this happened. And you will see where your country has enough racial division. Why are they pushing for more? Glenn Greenwald is an independent journalist. You can find his work on Substack, and we hope that you will. Glenn, thanks so much for coming on. I, since yours is about the only Twitter feed I read, I saw that you, and maybe I'm misunderstanding this, I thought you wrote today that media organizations in Brazil where you live were sincerely under the impression that the people shot in Kenosha were black and they took that from the American media? Did I misread that? No, you did not. That's exact, not just one, the three biggest news outlets in Brazil, not a year ago, but this week in covering the trial, explicitly stated that the people Kyle Rittenhouse shot were black and they had to retract it. There wasn't just them. The Independent in the UK did the same thing. One of the leading uh, Dutch papers did the same thing. Obviously, they're watching the American media that deliberately cultivated this false narrative from the start that he was a white supremacist. And so therefore, they assumed that he went there and shot black people, which is what you would do if you were a white supremacist. The media misled not just the American public, but the entire world. Problems are, and there are no questions here tonight that this outcome is prob problematic. It is. Right now, there are no protests. That's a good thing. Protesting is a right, of course. But it's probably for the best that this situation isn't generating outrage on the streets. I don't know how that would help. These calls that I'm hearing and you're hearing that this jury should have found some way to punish this guy, they're troubling because they ignore the laws at play. The president says he stands by the jury and its conclusion. But many of his supporters are saying this is an injustice because too many other kids get in trouble for way less. Entire world. Why, why? I mean, this is a longer conversation I hope that we can have, but it's so obvious with this story specifically, you know, four white people are, the, you know, they're the main players in it and they're telling us it's a race crime. Why are they doing that? It seems like an intentional effort to divide the country along color lines to me. It really is the case that the liberal left in the United States has completely lost the capacity to understand any significant events in the world without seeing things through a prism of race. Everything yeah. is racist, everything is white nationalist, everything is white supremacist, everyone with whom they disagree is guilty of all those things. So even in a case where on its face race has nothing to do with it, it's a white person who shot three white people, yes. all of whom did some form of aggression against him, they still end up imposing it because it's the only way they can understand the world. And by doing that, they gain a lot of power. They get people to think they're on the right side of history by always agreeing with them.
this verdict to happen today. This country was built on the idea of, of, that white men had a, a, a particular kind of freedom and a particular kind of citizenship that only they have. That gives, you know, from the slave catchers on the right to inflict violence um, in the name of protecting property. That's like the foundational creation of the United States. So it we're going to go, Joy. The foundation. <laughs> the foundation. I get to run around and just pedal my weapon and shoot at will. I, lo I saw this one meme that was like 17 year olds, you know, shooting other people was how you got your freedom. Because, <laughs> like, other 17 year olds that, that kill British shoulders, you know? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that one. Yep. <laughs> Something like that. I forgot, but that was like the best. I'm like, oh. That's how this country was created, you moron. <laughs> well, at least for during the Civil War. <laughs> All right, so kind of sticking with the uh, Rittenhouse, before we get into the Tim Pool Super Show, uh, Michael Malice, who was on the Super Show with, with them, but he, he just recorded an interview with Robert Barnes, who was one of the original attorneys for Kyle Rittenhouse, that's another person to follow for legal stuff on Twitter, Robert Barnes. Uh, he's really good. Um, but I was trying to figure out what are they up to in this trial? Because I watched enough of the trial to realize there's no case here. There's, there's zero case. Now, I just found out today that the Loudoun prosecutor is funded by your buddy George Soros. So that makes sense. But I, I was trying to find an angle. It's like there's no way they can find him guilty on any charges. This is obvious self-defense. So what are they up to? And yeah. you and I talked a little bit about this, but here's just a short three minutes or so on exactly what they're up to in bringing this trial. And, and the damage is done regardless of the verdict. They, they've, they're just chipping away is yeah. kind of my feeling. Well, I, I'm conf can you help me understand from the prosecutor's point of view why they're trying to make such a big case out of Kyle? What, 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 how does this benefit them? Because if they can convict Kyle, there is no real self-defense left in America. Okay. Okay. This is yeah. a highly, heavily political case. Because it's already a problem that we give the state a monopolized means on certain means of violence, of mass violence. Imagine if the state then has a monopoly on the use of violence, period. Self-defense is the one counterbalance to that. Gun rights are one of the key counterbalance to that. If you are a statist at core, you want to take away self-defense and you want to take away gun rights. You want to make, for example, today, the prosecutor actually made the argument in closing argument that Kyle even bringing a gun didn't, was uh, denied him his rights of self-defense. He actually used a meme from Roadhouse saying that if you bring a gun to a fist fight, you don't have self-defense. In other words, if you use a gun to defend yourself, you don't have self-defense unless the other party also has a gun, which has never, of course, been the law. When you have a kid this innocent on this claim, he has no criminal record of any kind. Again, on these- Wait, I, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt you because this is, sounds so crazy to me, even like being familiar with like North Korean ideology. Uh, a woman's in her house, guy breaks in to rape her with a knife and she shoots him, right? Is it the prosecution's a perspective from what they're saying in this case that she should go to jail? Yes, correct. And by the way, in Kenosha, they are prosecuting a woman who defended herself against a sexual assault case and killed her attacker. So that's also happening very controversially in Kenosha and from the state's own witnesses. That's what they want to do. They want to show you're not allowed to bring the only the state. What they're really saying is only the state can use violence. Uh, lethal violence. So is is the legal theory that once you bring a gun, which you are legally allowed to do according to Second Amendment and, and in Kenosha, uh, anything that happens to you after that, it's too bad? Yes. Effectively, you can't use the gun to defend yourself. So that's what they're up to. Years ago, I heard some cases where like, oh yeah, it was self-defense, but like, oh, they wanted to try to sneak in or take that away a little bit. And I yeah. thought it was just like growing up, oh, someone like enters your home, like you don't even have to say anything, you can just shoot them because that's trespassing if they yeah. were being violent or 
they were doing something like that. I don't. Even, I didn't even think you needed to like. I don't know. Me growing up in the country, so it's a little bit. You know, that's very common. Like everyone has a gun. Yeah. Everyone knows gun safety. Guns are an issue. Well, and that's the thing. Gun yeah. safety is. Yeah, the safety part but also came in effect. It's like uh, liberals don't even know one thing about gun safety. Well, and, and so we've learned two things recently. One, Alec Baldwin shot two people because he doesn't understand gun safety. And two, did, I mean, you saw the the prosecutor take a AR-15 and point it at the jury with his finger on the No, you don't even point it. He had his finger on the trigger on top of it. You know, in the generation before me, they actually, in public schools, gun training, at least for boys, was a was a part of school. Like, you had to learn how to use a gun. And part of that is learning the safety features, you know. My, my dad is that generation, I bet. And he was, like, the president of his rifle association, and he did tests, and he did, like, safety tests. And he would have been, like, if he was, he'd been, like, you don't touch a gun, you know, you don't, you know, you don't touch a gun if you don't know if it's loading, you don't have to point it at anybody, like, he said that oh. he heard that from him several times. You don't point a gun at anyone, and you don't pick up someone uh, someone else's gun if, if it's you yours. Yeah. Like that. I mean, and I, I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, you're not responsible. Um, you don't pick up a gun either. You know, like so. There's no reason, right? There's no. Well, reason. I've learned just you know. I, I, I was never a big gun guy. I've got three now, and I had to go through a couple trainings, and I learned a lot. Like, just like, oh, I'm doing that wrong. I shouldn't pick this up. Oh, don't ever hold it like that. And so you, you learn those things. But, but, yeah. All right. So one of the things that uh, Scott Adams brought up a couple years ago was if the Democrats take over because there was so much anti-Trumpness going around, he said, be careful, there's going to be a conservative witch hunt that's that's going to be coming up. And I think we're, we're witnessing that right now. And it's really dangerous because the same Democrats that basically supported or took part in the support of all the rioting that went on two summers ago, they're also in charge of the Department of Justice. They've got the FBI in their pocket. They've got the CIA. That's and, really scary. Like, I mean, we already knew that. You know, but it's like it, now it's more real, and so it's it just if, is like it, extra scary now because they're not even prosecuting the right people anymore. They're like, no, they're, they're they're just going after anybody who's got a well, voice. You said, that's you, said the and, you know, the people's property, you know, and didn't do anything except you know wear your get up. Oh, you get to go to jail for you know. Whatever. Yeah, and they can. The problem with all of our laws is they can find something on anybody. You know. I think the joke is if a police officer is following a vehicle, it takes about a mile before you can pull him over for something, you know, not using your turn signal, whatever. Anyway, so Scott Adams breaks down a few of the recent witch hunts. Um, and I, one of the ones he talks about is the shaman guy from the. Yeah, that's, yeah, I was mentioning him just like. And I, I did embed a uh, little clip of shaman guy and all the destruction that he did during that. Um, so that'll be in the middle of this little. Rasmussen polls uh, has, a, has a poll result today that says 55% of uh, people who are asked, voters, I guess, uh, say Bannon prosecution is politically motivated. 55%, just think about this, 55% of the country thinks that they just watched a man be arrested without a crime. And that the government is doing it to punish him for political reasons. Now, I don't know if there's a crime or not. I'm no expert on that. But it does look like it's a political prosecution. I mean, I guess technically it's a crime because he, he's not showing up for, uh, uh, to testify. Um, also, Rasmussen asked about the uh, O'Keefe raid, you know, the Project Veritas stuff. And 52% of the public say that's politically motivated. Bannon and O'Keefe, two people associated with the political right, and over half of the country, so that's more than just Republicans, right? This is over half of the country in both cases, say this looks politically motivated. There's something happening. 
Do you feel it? This is part of the story. Let me, I'm going to piece together the whole tapestry as we go. But this is important, that it's not just the right who notices now that the government has overreached. Because at 55%, you're, you're way past the number of Republicans. You're into the Bill Maher territory, where even the, the reasonable people on the left are saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's a little too far. Let's keep going. Um, you heard that uh, Jacob Chansley, he was the so-called QAnon shaman, the guy who was part of the January 6th protest. I call it a protest. <clears throat> he got 41 months in federal prison. Uh, one of the longest sentences handed down so far in connection with the event. So he got one of the longest sentences, did nothing violent, didn't threaten anything violent, didn't do anything violent. They said that his little flag thing was a weapon because it had a flagpole. Um, this is a political prosecution. Hey! Fucking hey, man. Glad to see you guys. You guys are fucking patriots. Look at this guy. He's got covered in blood. God bless you. Yes. You good, sir? You need medical attention? I'm good. Thank you. You all right? I got shot in the face. Where are you? Got shot in the face with some kind of plastic bullet. Any chance I could get you guys yeah. to leave the Senate wing? We will. I've been making sure they ain't disrespecting the place. Okay, I just want to let you guys know this is like the sacredest place. I know. So now we've got Bannon, O'Keefe, and Jacob Chensley. Now, I'm not saying you didn't break a law. I'm saying that the penalty is clearly to make an example of them. I care what you think about it, and I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just saying that my personal standard for respecting my government has been surpassed. Yeah, we're, I can't respect this government anymore. Now, I got... <laughs> it's been surpassed. Oh, you need medical attention, sir. So make sure you're okay. Oh, I know. It's like, hey, guys, can you can you get out of this room now? This is like a really sacred room. And like, okay, we're out of here. Four and a half years. And there's still a bunch of people that are in jail without even having charges. Oh, I know. I've heard about some of them, and... Like Luke knows, this, this guy from this band, Ice Earth, his lead singer was just there and he's being prosecuted. And wow. Just for I mean, being we, there. This is getting really, really dangerous. Yes, he made music about all this stuff, like, and was warning people about it. Wow. Because, yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know all the details, but I, but, Luke, you know, he told me about it. I was like, oh, no, crap. You know, it's the same thing. He's being detained. It's, his bonds are being detained. His everything is being detained. He's this is like really stuck. scary. Scary stuff. Like, how can they get away with that? How can they get away with that? I don't know, but I don't know what we need to do to to, to reverse this. But you know, it's meanwhile teachers or parents of parents that are pushing back on school boards are getting FBI raids. Well, yeah, That's that could. Not okay. I saw an article in, in a paper that we got a paper by accident or just like a trial paper from around here. I, the first thing I saw is like, oh, declining enrollment for, you know, St. Paul, whatever school. And I was like, wow, that's 10,000 kids less in a certain amount of year period. Oh like, that's going to hit them hard because their whole budget is based on how many students I mean, they have. over a certain amount of years, but like it's probably gone down even more. And not just like yeah. lower population, you know, because yeah. there's, I mean, there's declining population or less kids or like declining population, but at the same time, we still have more people too. So it's like, uh, you know, people are having less kids now, but there's still a ton of people right now, you know, but yeah. people, are having, people are having less kids right now. So there's less kids in the system. Coming through. And now yeah. there's more homeschooling. And more private schools. So, yeah, it's a double whammy. Yeah, they yeah, were going to so close. Private, they were going to private school, and they're being moved to you know, Montessori school. You know, schools or Montessori schools that were just sort of like daycare are turning into schools now. That's what happened with the place that my sister's um, kids were at. If their school is is basically turned into what they're like their Montessori daycare is turned into a school now. Huh. So it's kind of cool, right? There, there there's more of that now. 
by more Waldorf yep. schools and more other schools that are more like even just regular like Christian schools. I hear a lot of people that I know that they're not necessarily Christian per se. You know, they're like me and you, but they they'll they they'll have their kid go there in a heartbeat because it's way more oh, for sure. than because there's there are actually maybe you know, and they yeah. won't make the kids wear they won't make the kids wear masks or anything. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So last week, Tim Poole did an impromptu uh, podcast. Did you get a chance to catch that? I hope not, because I brought a bunch of clips from it. Because <laughs> I didn't yet, no. You familiar with Tim Poole? Waiting. Okay. So from what I understand, he was, he, he, I think he... I think he lives in like Tennessee or something, and that's where he does his podcast. And he does like a daily podcast or at least five days a week. He's really busy. But I think what he was doing was he was coming down because he was going to be on Joe Rogan on Tuesday of last week. But he knew that the Rittenhouse verdict was about to land, and he wanted to do a show that night for it. And so he brought his whatever, his... uh Winnebago, which is a studio recording studio down to Austin, and he brought the whole gang. And then when the Rittenhouse would have been, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yes. Uh, but then when the, when the verdict didn't come in, when the verdict didn't come in, he's like, well, what should we do? We should do something. There's a lot of talking heads in Austin. So he got, he got Joe Rogan, Michael Malice, Drew Hernandez. I'm not familiar with him. Uh, Alex Jones, and oh, I forget the woman's name. Well, it'll come back to me. But so they had kind of a super show, and Joe Rogan. Did I mention Joe Rogan? Um. So I'm, I was excited, and a lot of people that follow these guys were super excited. You know, just judging, but from the comments on YouTube and whatnot, because they did it live. And so the first clip I want to show you is kind of it's Michael Malice going off about something. But the reason I start with this one was because. You know, first of all, you've got a group like this together. There's a lot of egos, and then it can get chaotic. So I was curious how that was all going to go, everyone talking over themselves or whatnot. But about a year ago, Michael Malice and Alex Jones were on Joe Rogan, and I think what happened was Alex Jones has got, like, big energy. Like, he just takes over a room, and he kept cutting Michael Malice off. And so when Malice got in with this group, I think he was ready for that. So at about the 30-second mark, he gets a little uh, fussy with Alex. But we'll just start with this to, as an appetizer for the Super Show. Thank you, sir. I like, yeah, yeah, I like talking about it. the things that Michael talks about, you know, like uh, 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 police, constitution, freedom, liberty. That's my, that's my jam. And um, I, I don't know if you saw that rant I did where they got really mad at me. On, of course on, on I saw it. I was my porn. My, was my, <laughs> my, my, my sheets are ruined. It's his People were saying together. it was because you were dewormed that it changed you. I know it's yeah. funny, but like, <laughs> it's not the first rant I've ever had. The boot of the authoritarian fascist government. And it will get worse and it will happen to you because you keep complying and you keep saying, but my kids need food. And now inflation is here and there's food shortages and your kids aren't eating and the schools are indoctrinating your kids. Now we see a turnaround with Youngkin because the parents are standing up. But too many people keep saying, as long as I keep filleting the state and dropping on my knees for the far left extremists, I will squeak by and you will not. The police will come to your home. They will kick your door in and they will arrest you because the good cops have already started quitting. And like we saw in Seattle, the police arrested the man who was retreating from Antifa as Antifa approached him with clubs in hand and they apologized to Antifa over it. Like we saw in the Chaz, when, to, when, when several men unloaded hundreds of rounds into an SUV, and then the extremists stripped the evidence from the vehicle, and none of those people are brought to justice. And now we are at the point where Project Veritas is having their private, privileged, legal communications leaked to the, to the New York Times, who with a smile on their face violate all norms, all respect, and lack all scruples, and you think sitting back and complying will result in you getting by. You are wrong. I'm sick of this. Preach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you do when 
the FBI is violating the Constitution because you can't call anyone at that point. There's no one, no more authority to appeal to. You have to create your own. I, I mean, there's a video from our old studio where I'm like, they went to this dude's house in Wisconsin and were protesting in front of his house. They had set fi the same protesters set fire to a house before. And when the guy brandished a shotgun, the police came and arrested him yes, from his own house. Yep. And I was like, these people will come to your home. They will protest you, these, these activists, obviously. Yep. And the police will kick in your door and they will bash your teeth in. And Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's where we're at, right? Yeah. Okay, so I have something to say. It's like, yeah, it's like they're trying to, the whole, the Second Amendment doesn't exist. It's like they're trying to ignore it, like white it out. It's like a little white out. And, and it's like self-defense doesn't mean crap anymore. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, it's like, I feel, it's like, oh, well, we're supposed to have a Second Amendment. We can have guns, right? It's legal. But at the same time, but you, no. Can't take it out of your case. It's like, yeah, it's oh, so reason yeah. Reason. Yeah. Oh, touch it or use it or you know exactly. oh, but, but yeah. people in movie sets can can use them with real bullets in them yeah and they're going yeah. after it hard and we would be australia right now in canada if it weren't for our guns but you know what? and they so know many, that so many people have guns now they can't actually take them all away this is impossible oh i was talking to my wife about this and i say yes they can like she said that First of all, a bunch of liberals bought, bought guns you know, two summers ago. But also, the, the huge number that was up were women. But, I mean, if they want to come and take our guns, it'll be a bloody mess. But it, it could happen. I mean, they could we try. Keep giving... I'm sure they could try, but I'm not sure they would be successful because there's more guns in the U.S. now than there's ever been, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. It would be messy, that's for sure. But they could get rid of the most of them. Um, all right, for the next Tim Pool Super Show, we've got, uh, I think Michael Malice is going to be talking, they're going to be talking about anarchism and the difference between anarchism and just decentralization. I can't believe, I've, I've got his book. I'm about halfway through. The Anarchist Handbook. It's interesting. I never thought that I'd be reading this and giving it actual thought a couple of years ago, but the way our government is acting, I'm not sure if we need it. So, I, of course, would always want to carry insurance, but and that's on a state level as well. The idea that the government would mandate you buy a private product and, and, and then regulate that product to like guarantee and your money. And now they use it as an example. Oh, you got to buy insurance. You got to wear seatbelts. So you got to take a shot. I say, I take a shot. I say, I'm more of an anarchist than Malice, I guess. Oh, <laughs> sweetheart. Oh, for... Come sit on my lap right there. No. Oh. <laughs> you and Blair, right Listen, here. you're no Santa Claus. I'm not sitting on that lap. Okay. I'm just saying I agree with anarchist precepts, but informing that and injecting that into the real world does not work. The, I disagree. You're out of until your it's scalable, yeah. until it's been proven. It's complete. Yeah. Anarchism isn't a location, it's a relationship. So this show right now is an example of anarchism working. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There's, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot more anarchism than we know. <laughs> Centralization is when we have government, when we have fat cat bureaucrat mafiosos coming in and saying, I want to cut of that. It's centralization. Decentralization is anarchy, in and my I'm opinion. And I'm for decentralization. Exactly. So, right. I'm, so you're for anarchy, and I'm for anarchy, because that's the true definition of it, with no one intervening, no one forcing you to do something. <laughs> that's the basic it's core concept, concept <laughs> philosophies of I'm anarchy, say, which say, should be that. respected and talked about properly. Say, and that's why I had to correct Joe Rogan when he you. said this was anarchy. No, it wasn't. I, I, it was I, I, state sponsored I, terrorism. Give, give Alex seconds. knows about that. Give me 30 seconds, I'll shut up. That's a I lie. don't believe that. You're that is a lie. You're an effing liar. That is not true. You're an effing liar. 30 seconds. I would, I would like to give everybody every lie detector yeah. has just exploded. Get a Terrorism at its best. Oh, no. Antifa. Antifa. Or whatever. Yeah. So, Blair White, that was the other guest. She's the one sitting next to Alex Jones. And I got to get this joke out, okay? This this little podcast was such a sausage fest that sausage. even half the women have a penis on this one. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> out. A lot of testosterone going on. Um, so this next one, they talk a little bit about towards the middle. And I don't know... I started following Brett Weinstein and his wife, Heather Hying, early in the lockdown. They're evolutionary biologists. Okay. 
and they've got a scientific background. But one of the things Brett tried to do in the summer of 2020 was create a third party. And he had a really interesting idea. He said, let's recruit the top Republican and the top Democrat, put them on a ticket together, and they'll run as the unity party. And I think they got it down to like Tulsi Gabbard and Dan Crenshaw or something. It was an interesting idea. It was harebrained a little bit. But the point is, is that as he was trying to get signatures for this, he got deplatformed on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, for just trying to create a third party. Like there was nothing hatred hatred about it. There was no racism. Um, But anyway, they're going to talk a little bit about that. And I think Joe Rogan is part of this clip as well companies, whether it's Google or whether it's Facebook or Instagram, if they can just censor you based on ideology, then you don't have freedom of speech because they're the primary means that people communicate. So until we accept that there's some sort of utility, it's not as simple as it's a private company, when it's literally one of the main two or three ways that human beings share ideas across the planet fucking Earth, it's bigger than just a company. And, and I don't know what the solution to that is, but we have to have that conversation. Free the software. Yeah, right I now, mean, I mean, Joe, not having that yeah. conversation. They're abusing because, their power. Right, yeah, because are. the way it, it censors is always in favor of the left. And Joe, the people on the left think that's a good idea. But eventually, you can't be left enough. It's yeah. just going to keep going. It's gonna. It's a machine. It's Pac-Man. It's just going to keep going. Wait, 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 wait. I got to ask Joe. Um, so uh, a couple of years ago, you had Jack Dorsey on your show. You got a bunch of dislikes on the video. We ended up talking. You ended up inviting me out. And I don't you know. You destroyed him. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not about that. I, want, I wanted to ask you, like, how do you feel your opinion has changed since before we did that That's show and well, to where we're at today? There's a lot of things have opened my eyes, like slowly but surely, like seeing examples of people censored. And some of them that don't make any sense at all. Like one of the, one of the best ones was Brett Weinstein and his whole... Um, this whole unity party yeah that that yeah. when when that got censored i was like okay you guys banned an account for no reason because you thought that that account which is by a bunch of influential pe- influential uh, intellectuals was going to somehow or another take votes away from what you thought yeah, was yeah. the party that should win and so you just banned the account so then you're making like these ideological choices about free speech so you're saying your free speech is not as important as the result that i want and so you're going to ban people and I, when I saw that, I was like, this is wild. Yeah. This is fucking wild. And then I talked to a lot of people that were uh, the Second Amendment advocates. They were saying before the election, they were going back into their Instagrams and their Facebooks and finding posts from eight, nine years ago and, and banning them for those posts. Yep. That they were going Jeez. deep. Yeah, they were doing that just specifically because they didn't want people influencing the vote in any way. A thousand here, a hundred there. Like, if they could just chip away... Through all these different angles, like this and, is, and make okay. examples. And let's out of just people. briefly yeah. look at that. Do you remember on Facebook leading up to the 2020 election, there was a group called Walk the Walk Away Party, and it was like it, it was a great, familiar, but I'm not exactly sure. And and it, even during this time, I was so fucking pissed because. At this time, I was still brainwashed and thinking, you know, Trump was a, you know, not a good person to vote for. But at the same time, I knew Hillary was crooked and evil. No, this was before. This was before the 2020. So I was still on the. Yeah, before that, yeah, yeah. Um, and I would because I was still on the fence about Trump, but I saw this Facebook group called the Walk Away Walk Away from Democrats or something, and it's all former Democrats that that got red pilled. Oh, okay, yeah. Facebook, Facebook banned them. There was nothing. It was just people sharing their political stories. That was it. And it's gone. So it, the, the overreach is incredible. It's incredible that Trump got as many votes as he did, given and the whole system was against him between the media. It was incredible. I probably helped because I didn't, because I was never going to vote for Hillary because I knew she was a criminal. Yeah. And I knew that. I didn't know anything about Trump. So I didn't have anything to go off, and so I couldn't make a I, I couldn't make a educated decision to vote for him or not. So I just yeah. went for the Green Party because that's what I thought would be like that I could you know put my vote because I thought you know that would have been better than the one I don't know anything about and the one I do know something about. So yeah, well, and that's yeah. fair enough. 
And people that argue you shouldn't vote third party because it's just a wasted vote, even if it is in that election, what people don't realize is as third parties get more votes each election, it gives them more energy for the next one. So the only way out of this Republican Democratic box that we're in is to start just acting outside of it. You know, I don't even feel like there should be these parties anymore because, or they, there should be way more votes than just like, oh, the, the Democratic and the Republican. There should be, there should be more, more parties or more people that have different views because then it'd be more of a, a uh, what do you call it? So there's not a monopoly. There's a monopoly on politics with the two parties. Yeah, oh, absolutely. There's more, issues, there's more issues than just something being like black and white. There's, there's different issues. There's a lot more issues than than just separating um, them into like, oh, well, these are all the issues that you, that you can worry about. And then these are all the issues that you can worry about over here. Because like I was a, you know, I was a liberal, but of that wanted medical freedom. That's, that's kind of weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I was, you know, and now I'm, you know, I'm like, well, I'm going to vote where the main, the issues that, that they're being covered, like where my freedoms are being covered is now on, on, the, on, on the right. So I'll yeah. just vote for mostly the candidates that will cover my main issues, which. Yes. And that's what most people do that, that aren't totally into politics. They, and that's why a bunch of bad policies just get put through because like abortion's a key example. Like, well, I'm, I'm for or against abortion. Therefore you've only got one or you've got one choice of who you're going to vote for. Mm -hmm. And you're right. If we had multiple parties that there was some nuance, then it wouldn't, you wouldn't be voting for that one issue. You'd be voting for like, well, this person has these ideas that I like and these that I don't like. Gun control is another one. It's just a split. Like you're either for it or against it. Oh, you're Democrat or Republican, just through that. I don't know. There just needs to be a little bit more mixing and like that. There needs to be more than just that yeah. straight up. Because there's people who are like on the scale, like there's, okay, like our box is here. You're more on the far left or far right, or you're closer to the middle. Yeah. You know, right? And I would say I'm closer to the, you know, maybe closer to the, you know, middle right you know now <laughs> right because of all the craziness you know but i still like i mean i don't give a fuck if you're gay or want to get married i don't give a shit that doesn't affect me i don't right. like is there a philosophical question whether you should or not depending on like maybe but do, do yeah, i care does that, that affect my happiness or get, no so who cares yeah. like and that's up to the individual yeah. i don't want to have a strong opinion there at all because I don't, I don't give a f. Like I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I, like, I, I like that. It's just like it, even if you don't agree with it, it's like people can make their own choices. You know, but yeah. like yeah. for me, you it's know, individual. and then the, for for like abortion, yeah, I'm a mean person. I I I think that's I think that's killing people. So I that that I would then I would feel strongly like yo, I don't want people to do that. But I also don't want to say oh. Well, you know, you can have an abortion, but we're not going to help give you, like, you know, to make your decisions. So I think, I think there's a lot to do with. I yeah. think before when I didn't like, that was like a hot topic. It's like, oh, well, these things are bad or like on the far right and you should be doing them. But then not giving people the right education and resources from the get-go like in society you know you're not being taught how to have like healthy relationships with people and to set boundaries and all this personal growth stuff that would and you know parent things that you know parents should be teaching kids or whatever teaching kids from the get-go to avoid the place where you not, you'd have a baby that you didn't want like certain things yeah. it's like, there's like a and I can learn from firsthand from having two babies that were kind. Like, I'm not just pulling this out of my ass because I don't yep. know. This is, a, this is a real life. You know, I had the option to, you know, blank, but, you know, but didn't, you know. And I, I don't know. So it, it was just not an option for me from growing up in my situation. But even my eight, my modeling agent, she was a dancer in L.A. She um, had two kids, single mom, but her, and she was a, for sure, a little, you know, I think she was, 
I actually have no idea what her politicalness was, but she was very free in the sense of, you know, people are going to do their thing, right? But she's like, nope, you have kids. Take care of your kids. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's just, it's just, and then make better decisions, you know? So, I mean, that's just an example. Like, there's so many issues that need, like, society needs to, you know, needs to be better, you know, at the end, like, in the schools. Like, they're trying to make kids make these bad decisions, like, saying, oh, with all their stupid sex education, like, trying to get kids to, like, do things when they're not, you know, trying to get kids to be sexually active early or encouraging it, giving them, you know, or encouraging them talking about things that they shouldn't be talking about, like, you know, you know, anal sex or teaching kids anal sex as a kid. Like, why is that in school? Like, why is that? Yeah, like, we haven't touched on much of that, and we're going to because some. I've seen a lot of stuff on this already, and I'm like, it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm all for sacred sexuality education, but I'm not for kids learning about things that, and or being encouraged to do things that they aren't ready for or don't want to do. Like, if a kid comes up and says, and, and you find out that they're gay, then you can have a talk to them about gay sex. You know. And then help yeah. help help support that young person or whatever it is specifically for per, that that person's case, right? But the gay agenda is like, or the trans agenda is really strong right now. Just to make kids we're gonna this is gonna be a main topic coming up All because these topics are so like I just realized that that's that's part of the Marxist that's part of the Marxist thread is. Uh, is gay relationships and even worse, pedophilia. Like, yeah, they're it's trying right. to normalize that. Oh, it's, they make, they, I don't know what the name of it is, but they're trying to normalize it as a disorder or like as I a, know. It's, no, I not know. a disorder anymore, as a sexual orientation. And that's yeah. not okay. Yep. yep. It's like, I think a college professor just got fired for some video that he posted on that, but thank God. Well, yeah, and, but because they can't catch people in the light, they, but they have to slowly indoctrinate it, right? Because yeah. most people. Most people like you and me that are actually good people, or at least normal people, not, you know. Speak for yourself. Think. Most people that I know would say that pedophilia is bad, right? Or that they'll yes. say that in the public eye because that's what the public eye is deeming as bad, right? But at the same time, it's all around us. Yeah. Or under our noses and we don't even realize it. Or, you know, we're seeing the, you know, stooge president in the, in the, um, on, on set, you know, being all weird, and no one, no one says anything. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to go so, out of order since you brought this know. up. You know, so there's a, I don't know, but I there's think a uh, uh, um, part of the QAnon or whatever is that there's all this, you know, baby eating and blood, whatever, which you take with a grain of salt. But if pedophilia, but we also know that pedophilia is around given the Jeffrey Epstein saga. So here's it. And I was talking to my buddy in California about Joe Biden. And I'm like, you know, if, if these guys really are about that, but one of these days, Biden's going to do something in public. He's already done things in public. He has. So I've got this, here's two examples of him getting creepy with kids. It's when I see stuff like this, I'm like, wait a minute, maybe that's QAnon stuff. Isn't um, what? wasn't having anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the sick guy. He's going to do something worse than that. Oh. Well, I have looked into, I have seen all of the angles with by Daniel Lee because he does investigative reporting on all those pedophilia and people going away from being trafficked and sex yeah. trafficked. So it's like the adrenochrome harvesting and like the whole abortion industry industry feeds into that and that's why they want you to have abortions because they use the baby parts but people use baby parts for the um companies companies use them for jabs or for yep. um, natural flavorings and food there's a whole list of companies that have baby parts in them yeah no it's it, it's really like, sick out 
there, let's just say, and just think of almost every single processed food out there on the shelf has some sort of fetal tissue in it. And they have to an answer. Just so you just so everybody knows. Most of them do. And even there's some organic companies that have it too. There's this one tea organic tea company that tea. in naked juice. Naked juice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Humans when you do that. Um Oreos, I think too. Like just all have, any like prepackaged like junk food has some sort of baby parts in them. So we're just in the. We're, be grossed out, but no, but we're in the we're in the tran- transition of awakening apparently. So we're just all this stuff is coming up. Three years ago, I would have said you're crazy. Why am I having a conversation with you? I um, have, but I believe a little bit of it. But I was like, what? Really? All that? I, I had a little bit of space for it, but it's like, eh. But the way they're getting caught in their all their other lives right now, it's 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 like, well, I can't put anything past them. So we're gonna go back to the super show, uh, and they're gonna talk about the media finally being exposed. But I'm already <laughs> so it's it's getting it's hot in here. Listen, it's kind of it exciting. Is, I like it. Let let Joe talk. Isn't it kind of exciting though? Like obviously the world has gone completely into chaos. Yes. Isn't it great? Like we are in this weird position where the mainstream media is almost universally accepted as at least being mostly full of shit mm-hmm. or partly full of shit totally right? full of crap some let's the most the most optimistic person says well they lie sometimes right that right. was never the case with walter cronkite exactly who also know. lied all the time no, or was it or was it did he, right. did he lie, he lied all Rogan the time but people didn't realize it they it's lie like, like a crackhead hitting on a crack rock alex every <laughs> word they say is a lie including and and the since yeah. the beginning. It's Since reached new levels of lying, lying though. No, no, we've reached new levels of being able to expose them. They were lied us into the Spanish War in, uh, in yeah, Cuba no, 100 years ago. Nothing's changed. That's the truth, right? Rosebud. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Gulf of Tonkin, Operation North. It's Wood. always been lies. It's always Mass been lies. Destruction. Right. Absolutely. This is the way they do business. The New York Times refused to report that Germany was targeting Jews. Oh, exactly. So, so, so yes, how we, because that would be buying into identity politics at the time because wow. Jews were white, and that's what Hitler said. Jews weren't white. And the government so were, knew about it, and they covered it up, yes. including the railroads, which they could have stopped, but they decided not yes. to. There's oh, a wait, book wait. called so, Buried... Hold on, let me just yeah. make one point. There's a book called Buried by the Times. Look it up. Yep. And this was how they covered it up because they didn't want to buy into what Hitler sure, What they were asking is, you know, has, it, has the corporate press gotten worse? And my point is, we have more mechanisms to expose their depravity and malfeasance in real time. For example, if this had been 20 years ago, they would have been in a position not to let this Kyle Rittenhouse video ever anyone would ever see it. Yep. Now, if you have some kind of hack journalist with his cameraman, one's wearing a mask, one's not, everyone has got a phone, and all it takes is one person to film it, put it on Twitter or Facebook, and then immediately everyone can see it in real time. Michael, I totally you, hold on, agree with you. This this guy, right I, just, I just sent you a text message. All right. with a- but our screens are screwed up, or at least my- just we're just recently, they're re, you know, recently, you know, we're being able to, you know, call them on their shit. Yes, we have the tools to catch them. Yeah. So I think Malice is right on that. It's not that they just started overlying. It's that, oh, we, we're, we're catching them in their lies now. And, and it's easy because when they show the same picture footage of the same hospital in several different countries and several different news stations, the same picture, and they repeat it from the other year. Yeah. Yeah. I think yep. there's something going not good. Well, they don't have a good media, you know, like a good photo. <laughs> they don't know how to do some good art, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think I've got one or two more here. This next one, I think they're going to talk about gun rights and public schools. Like I say, they kind of get into everything in the show. It's just hard because it keeps locking my face here. But when people start taking their own lives into their own hands and start making decisions for their families, for their communities, for their neighborhoods on a local level, that's when things will change dramatically and they can it's change out of the whole best. system. The whole system is based on an illusion. Can I just it's say one thing? On best and once that lie, up. yeah, once that lie is eviscerated, then and only then do the we establishment lose wars. all power and wars. the people actually do stand up and actually do make a big key difference by just uh, asserting themselves as free, sovereign human beings. And here's the model. The model is gun right laws. Mm. If you're if you're looking at Washington, it's going to be a wash. There, if you go to the Wik- Wikipedia and look at the gun right laws in America page, there is a GIF 
that goes year by year in terms we of- We it just like last week. Oh, perfect. Yeah, we were looking at where, it. Where it goes from no one has gun licenses to sh um, may issue, to shall issue, to so not even having a license. And then state by state, it overwhelmingly okay, changed. So oh, Alex, let me please let me finish. I bet you've been talking to continually. This is you said 10 minutes, Alex. This is the gift. A lot of those yeah. middle so, states. Exactly. And the other states. thing is, this is, the model that's going to happen, what's going to save America, is when this happens with regards to education. As the money goes to funding students instead of funding systems, and you get kids out of government schools, which are literal prisons for children, mm -hmm. and the only place many people experience violence in their lifetimes, the cathedral is ruined. Look, because yeah. all you need is 10% of the population to realize that this is all a lie. Just yeah. look at this map and watch as all of the shall issues turn green, which is constitutional carry, unrestricted right to bear arms. Can you explain what the colors are? It might be hard to read. Uh, so this is by, so it's gonna start over in a second. In 1986, no issue, meaning these states, all the states that are in red, which is a large amount, will not give you concealed carry. Watch how they flip In the green. yellow ones, they might. The blue ones, as they're now expanding, are, are ordered, they must give you a concealed carry if you apply. You can see here, this is, I think, this is Vermont, right? That's an unrestricted, Alaska, unrestricted. Now, starting around the mid-2000s, the late 2000s, we start seeing the rise. Okay, 2010, constitutional carry starts. States are now enforce, uh, 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 enacting laws that say you don't need a permit, you don't need to apply. The Constitution says you have a right to keep and bear arms. Texas just got this. This is crazy. Texas... Actually, you take a, a license, you get an exam and a handgun license. Now in Texas, it's constitutional carry. Freedom it's, is, is, is winning. a chain reaction. Yeah. It could yes. be a coincidence. The chart is also going to be the same way when it comes to homeschooling because we're seeing yes. a huge rise of people saying this indoctrination center, this Rockefeller created education center is something that's destroying my child's flame. My child's life is being destroyed by this indoctrination, by this hate. And by the, way, Luke, the beginning. by the way, Luke, by the way, Luke, it's almost over the top what they're trying to cause a populist uprising. Yes. Everything they're like, what is, it's so ridiculous. And here's the thing, Alex, it doesn't matter where a parent stands politically. You go on TikTok and you mm. see these uh, educational professionals running, professionals running their mouths. You're going to think, I don't know what this is, but I don't want this person near my kid. Yeah. Yep. There was I a think, university professor today making arguments. Pedophilia. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I was going to say that, <laughs> but, but now we're saying it. He was now making excuses it. for pedophilia as a, as a university professor in sociology, making a video publicly, not afraid to say, hey, pedophiles are just, you know, minor attracted persons. No, they're not. They're, they're, they're pedophiles. They need to be called out for what they are. And, and trying to normalize this culturally is having a huge backlash. And they've been doing this in Loudoun County, mm -hmm. but they've been doing this in counties all throughout the United States. Yeah, it's a disease. It's a disease. What's that? It's a disease. It's not a it's sexual a Yes, yes. It's a mental illness. Let's just say it's a mental illness. Yeah. That it's, not, it's not really curable, so they need to be let go. I don't know what to do. You know, they changed the, in, in Colorado, they changed, they changed the verbiage sexual predator, I think. Or what, what's it called when you get charged with the sex crime? You're a uh, offender or something, offender? I don't know. They had to change the name, though, because it was too mean or something and i'm like what i don't know what it is i, I think like, it's a registered predator or a sexual predator sex i forget offender. it's a sex offender yeah. sex offender so they so they had to change it to something a little softer now the fact that it's on your record for your whole life i think people should be aware because i'm not sure if that is fixable i don't know it's a tough call where like 30 years later, you still have to go, I don't know. I get really upset with minor sex crimes, though. Yeah, that should never go away. People should know. No. And if you're going to have a relationship with somebody, you should obviously have, they should know about your past, and they'll know you well enough that you, you're not like that anymore, right? But I don't know. I don't feel like any any assault on a minor is just... But then there is the whole thing. Oh, if you turned 18 and your girlfriend was already is set is 17 still, that's a little different. I think there, there's gray areas, yes. But like a like a, a guy that's 40 and a kid that's 10, that's wrong. No. Very no. But like if you were 
together and you're young people close in age and then you, one person turns an adult first, then that's there's gotta that be one you have to treat that, right? that's not you have to treat that very differently. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's I agree. but I mean I mean I've seen something else where a parents gave permission for their daughter, preteen or teen, preteen, teen oh. daughter to marry an adult. Is that legal? I think it's it might be legal in some states. Yeah, that huh. I I I think that is wrong. So it is wrong, but it's totally wrong. But if it's, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. If you're, you should. I don't know. If you're, you. I don't know. I don't think minors should be getting married, but. If, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have enough information, but I definitely don't think that minor, like a pre-tea pubescent girl should be married to anybody. Yeah. Not a pre, not a pre, no, not that young. She looked 10. I think she was 12. I don't know. But like, I know women and people got married younger, but they were like 14 and 15 or 14 and 25, you know, like. Yeah. Like, and then they, they chose to be married, you know, because life was different before, you know, people yeah. died earlier or it was harsher. And so when you were a woman, you were a woman and then you got married and then you had babies and then you worked. So yeah, you better have, I don't, yeah. I don't think that that's bad, but like a preview has, a new Bessent girl had permission from their parents. I'm pretty sure she was trafficked from some, somehow and Probably. was given to some pedophile. Ped, pedophile. As his, his his child bride, I'm sure that was the case. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I don't. I know that that's that's not okay. No. No, nope, that's not okay. Um. So I got one more here for this is not from the Super Show, but as we transition from the COVID to the climate change, this is uh this is one guy's opinion. And then they're going to show it. Did you see Prince Charles's little talk at the global summit a few, a few weeks ago? Like it, it's, here's the deal. And we've talked about this in previous shows. There's, I think there's some kind of rule among this evil where they have to, they have to let us know what they're up to. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like they have to disclose. The, yeah. They have to disclose it and they are disclosing it and we're just, but they own the media. So the media is not covering it. Are you off? You put yourself off mute. Here we go. Yeah, I just wanted to <laughs> avoid all the crazy talking. <laughs> yeah. All right. So while you think of a question of the day or question of the week, we I'm going to introduce one more new segment here that we try to continue going, and it's called the tweet of the year so far. So far. Okay. Now I I shared this one with you the other day, but. Um, as you know, Elon Musk and Bernie Sanders have been going after it on Twitter. Bernie started saying something about billionaires should pay their fair share, and Elon came back. Yeah, Elon came back. About that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Elon came back and said, "Oh, I didn't. I forgot that you're still alive." Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I love it when the richest guy in the world is a troll. <laughs> yeah. So then Bernie starts. Then Bernie goes on about. We shouldn't leave space travel up to the rich billionaires, the elites. That should be something that the government should be doing. And it's like, Bernie, you just argued your way out of socialism right there because the government's not sending us into space. It's the capitalist billionaires that are sending us into space, hopefully for the benefit of humankind. We'll see. Uh, anyway, so they're going back and forth, and then somebody tweeted this. I wish I could bring it up. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to bring it up when I edit it, but the tweet says this after Bernie and Elon are going after it. It says what followed was a spectacular clash of Bernie bros and Elon fanboys, tens of thousands of screaming crazy people, an ocean of gender, queer communist anime fairies, disembodied she Guevara heads and furry sex workers with pronouns and mental illnesses in their bios at war with tech enthusiasts, dank Pepe gifts apostate cartoon bunnies, and ancient Greek statues. Another skirmish in the great clown war of 2021. No one won. 
Oddly, no one ever seems to win. And that gets tweet of the year so far. Yep, that's good. That's a good one. Dara, do you have the question of the week? Yeah. What is it? Hmm, that's a tough one. Hmm. Yeah. Well, oh man, there's so much going on right now. To, like we talked about, we covered so many topics. Okay, so I was going to this. Whatever pops in my head in the next five seconds. So with all of this stuff, like all the censorship, all the the more division, the more censorship, you know, I know one of the guys on the show that you mentioned, he talks about how like, oh, you are giving up, you're complying because you want to put food on the table, but they're already taking away our food. The inflation it's scary. Up, yeah. The inflation rate is up. There's already shortages because of the lockdowns before. And then there was just a ripple. It's just a ripple effect, right? So it's like, oh, you, you don't want to get a measly paycheck, but then you want all these other things to happen down the chain. So it's like, because you didn't stand up for yourself, now all these other really bad things are happening. So the yeah. question would be well, for everybody, for the users, you know, you know, watching and listening, and for you know us is like, well, what are we going to do to be self-sufficient and more in community with people around us for resources versus like, oh, we need X corporations and and you know Bill Gates farmland for food or whatever, right? So it's like, what can we do to be more sufficient for ourselves instead of being reliant on going to the store for everything? Yeah, community with other people for to share resources and to share talents. Trees and thinking about how we can be, uh, um, how we can best serve our uh, community and friends and be self sufficient instead of just you know. No, that's a great that's a great question and a great thing to think about. I I've, I've been trying to network, especially with my farmer friends. Yeah, that's a good one. But we're so. We're so behind the eight ball as far as if, like, let's say things get really squeezed. So we start seeing food shortages, which could happen. And then if the government does a full core press and they cut us off from communication, like the Internet's down or the phone's, hurt, you know. I mean, the, that guy that I played road to serfdom guy about the cons, con, uh, corporativism. He was talking about like, hey, get, he goes, make your signs now because we might have to communicate without electronics. So make, you know, make your signs. You can go post up on the, on the trees or whatever. So people can communicate after the fact, make them now while your printer's still working, while we still have electricity. And I'm like, gosh, I wonder if we have to start thinking about because we're so vulnerable, right? Think if the water gets shut down or if the ga natural gas gets shut down, like especially living in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh you know i was thinking about that too and i'm like dude i wish i had a place that had like a, a you know wood stove and certain things and then i would be more or less set or have ability more ability to you know tackle the problem than just like oh well you'd, be, you'd have a few months at least right. Yeah. yeah right and so like there's a lot of things like that but like i have resources like i know certain people who are good with those things. So, right. you know, I don't personally network, network. <laughs> right. And I, you know, I grew up in the country, you know, I grew up chopping wood and having a wood stove and doing all kinds of other stuff, growing my own food. Cause I've been, I have been growing my own food and canning food for the season too. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things that I've been like, doing to be more self-sufficient um especially for my end and having friends that you know build things <laughs> you know and you yeah. know i know how to make food and i know how to help people get well if they're not well or things like that you know so trading with people is one of my best assets um, well hopefully if it goes down that road whatever 
commune that forms that people have food and water. Hopefully there's someone that wants kombucha because I can come in and make kombucha. Yeah. That would be my gift to the group. <laughs> it's a food, it's a water or a liquid that, that stays good. You're yeah, right. And if, if the water is a little bit bad going in and the fermentation will take care of it. Do you have just a couple more minutes if I, because we should talk about the FDA. Yeah, let's do it. 55 year. Oh, yeah, that bullshit. Yeah. I mean, my. You want to hear some more disappointment? Uh, I saw this in a tweet by Aaron, and I can't say his last name. Who has a last name that I can't say in public? And, and do you know why? It's a last name that I can't say in public. <laughs> no, it's, um, I can't say it because the last name is spelled S-I-R-I. And if I say his last name, it will activate all your iPhones. <laughs> so I can't say it. But somebody named Aaron, with the last name that's an iPhone digital assistant, he tweets this, um, that the FDA, now this is the FDA is asking this. This is, a, this is a key part of the story. The FDA is asking this. Is asking a federal judge to grant it until the year 2076. That's a long time from now. To fully release Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccination data. What? Wait, what? I have to read that again. The FDA asked federal judge to grant it until the year 2076 to fully release Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine data. You fucking motherfuckers. You fucking motherfuckers. The FDA is corrupt, obviously. If you had any doubt, you don't have any doubt now, do you? Uh, I have said from the first, and again, this was a personal opinion, that you that the benefit of a doubt or maybe the presumption would be in favor of the vaccines being safe. The presumption, without, without definite knowledge, but my personal presumption was that the vaccines were probably safe enough. This changes my assumption. Presumption. It changes my presumption. I think this information, you would have to presume it's unsafe or less safe than they're telling you. Let, let me be clear. I'm not going to say unsafe. That, that, that would be too strong because the evidence doesn't suggest that. But it does suggest that it's less safe than reported. Are you with me? Why would they hide information if it's good? Can you think of any reason? <clears throat> well, there are two reasons to hide information uh, well, one, inf one reason to hide information if it's good, right? There are two reasons to hide information. One is it's bad, so you don't want people to know. But the other is that it's not bad, but people might mistakenly think it is. Now, that's the case with Trump's uh, tax returns. We don't know if Trump's tax returns show something bad, and I really doubt it because, you know, he gets audited, he's got professionals doing stuff. But there's a 100% chance people would think it was bad because it's complicated and they don't understand taxes. And there would be something there. So the good reason not to re release good news is that the good news can be embarrassing because people will misinterpret it. But that wouldn't be a problem until 2076. You could just wait five years. You know, if, if the problem was you want people to misinterpret the data, just wait two years, right? Because then the pandemic's mostly over five years to be safe. But if you make, you know, 50 plus years to release this shit, you have to assume they're hiding bad news. What else could you assume? You fucking assholes. Um, now, I, I'm going to give them a little bit of safety. It is entirely possible that the government lied to you in what they thought was your best interest. Here would be an example of what that would look like. It could be that the vaccines are more dangerous than has been represented, but you're still better off country-wise getting them. Not individually. Individually, you know, all bets are off. But it might be better for the country even if, they, even if everybody knew these were more dangerous than reported. 
as possible. But does your country, your government, have the right to lie to you for your own benefit? They can do it. Obviously, they can do it and get away with it. But do they have the right to do that? No. No, they don't. They don't have that right. And for this, the government should fall. The FDA needs the answer to this. And if they can't answer for it, the government needs to fall. This is a government-ending thing right here. If you lie to the public this badly, even for a good intention, you know, and I don't know if there was any bad intention by anybody, but if you lie this badly, the, the government has to be replaced. Um, and, and by the way, I have, I have no belief that things would have been different under Trump because it's the FDA, right? It's not really the president who's doing anything on this, I don't think. Not yet. So this probably would have been the same. The FDA probably would have acted the same under Trump. This isn't even political. Um, That's crazy. That's almost comical. Like, really? They had asked for that many years? The FDA, it's not even, it's not even Pfizer asking for this. It's the FDA. So it's like... Oh, each other somehow, so... Well, obviously, and, and all these people that... Are, are pulling this shenanigans, they're all going to be dead by the time. I mean, that's so blatant. I don't know how we well, go, go get my fourth shot. I, I can trust it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we had a chaotic, we had a chaotic uh, lead in, but I think we did all right tonight, today, this afternoon. Chaotic. <laughs> yeah, I think we did good. It was a fun time. I think it was, a, we just talked about so many things and each one of these topics, we could do a whole show on just that one topic. No, oh, I know. It's hard keeping up. I know. It's really hard to keep up. It's ridiculously hard to keep up. <laughs> I mean, sometimes our shows are my source of news at the same time I'm, I'm here with you. <laughs> yeah, and I, no, I know. I know. I know, because sometimes I get yep. some other angles you don't, but you, get, you are on top of these things. I'm wrangling kids for well, no, but you're, but you're. I like what you're bringing to the table, though, because that's the key. Is we're we both have different people that we're listening to, yeah. that we share with each other. And you, I love how you dumped a bunch of footage on me this morning. It's like, okay, uh, well, maybe for next week, but I kind of. While I'm scrolling through this one thing, I'm like, oh, that's kind of. Cool. I'm just going to send that to him, and he can look at it or not, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. Because that was one, of the one, one. I linked you to one series that has like a really good, like series that drops a lot of truth bombs. It's investigative journalism, and sometimes watching yeah. those is really, really cool. Um, but only if you have time to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just I'll pick it up. It. I only just happened to catch it, you know. Yeah. Well, I think we should call it a show. Stick around, though. Yeah. Thank you very much. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.